Hi all, welcome back to another session of emergency medicine lecture series. In a previous video, I have discussed about interpretation of CT brain in a systematic way. Another most important investigation done in almost all the cases presenting to emergency department is the chest X-ray. An emergency physician or for that matter, any doctor should have a sound knowledge of interpretation of chest X-ray. Major abnormalities can be obviously evident, but it's your duty to recognize and quantify minor defects also. If you follow a systematic pattern, you will arrive at your diagnosis without much of difficulty and you will not be missing any of the signs present in the X-ray. I am Dr. S. Prakash Babu, Associate Professor of Emergency Medicine. First, let us concentrate on the principles of taking an X-ray. A beam of high energy are made to crash a metal object that produces X-rays. X-rays are made to pass through the part that has to be imaged. In this case, it is the chest. Different parts of the body, different tissues in the body like bone, soft tissue, absorb X-rays to different extents. Higher the density of the material, the brighter it will be imaged on a photographic film. Radiation is not absorbed, hit the photographic plate to form a negative image. That is what we call it as an X-ray film. So what do you mean by density? Density is how compactly the structure is packed. How compactly the ingredients of the structure are closer to each other. High density tissues like bone absorb X-rays to a greater degree and they appear as white on the film there are, because there are no X-rays that are absorbed behind it. Low density tissue, for example, the lungs or other soft tissues absorb X-rays to a lesser degree and appear black on the film. And structures like intermediate density like muscle fat appear as shades of different types of gray and the x-ray film you know that there are 3000 shades of gray that can be seen by a human naked eye so we know the principles of obtaining a chest x-ray now let us concentrate on when do you order a chest x-ray a chest x-ray assists in the diagnosis of diaphragmatic hernia lung tumors and the metastasis Detect known or suspected pulmonary, cardiovascular, or skeletal disorders. Identify the presence of any chest trauma like pleural effusion, chemothorax, etc. Confirm correct placement and position of the endotracheal tube, tracheostomy tube, chest tubes, central venous catheters, nasovestic feeding tubes, pacemaker wires, intrahiatic balloon pumps, swan gans catheters, and automatic implantable cardioverteral defibrillators. Evaluate positive purified protein derivative or Montex test for pulmonary tuberculosis. Monitor progressions, resolutions and maintenance of any pulmonary disease. Evaluate the patient's response to a therapeutic regimen like antibiotics or chemotherapy. So here I am showing you a normal chest x-ray. When you look at the chest x-ray, you should know the anatomical boundaries of the chest x-ray. So for ease in the film, the lungs have been, lung borders have been shown very clearly. The majority of upper parts of the X-ray are found by the upper part of front, the X-ray are found by the upper lobes of the lungs. In the right side, middle lobe and a part of lower lobe will be visible. In the left side, a part of lower lobe will be visible. You can see bilateral shoulder joints, the sternum, manubrium, margin of the superior vena cava, right main branchus, horizontal fissure, this is the horizontal fissure and this is the oblique fissure on both the sides, oblique fissure on both the sides. On the right side you can see inferior vena cava entering the heart, diaphragm and liver, this is the diaphragm and under this is the liver. And on the left side, diaphragmatic dome. Under diaphragmatic dome, you can see 
the spleen the center part there will be the fundic air bubble the center of the mediastinum is occupied by heart you can trace the heart borders and a prominent portion forms the aortic arch in older individuals the aortic arch can be calcified and will be visible as aortic knuckle left atrium majority of the portion of the heart is found with the left ventricle and you can see the cardiophrenic and the cardiophrenic angles so there are different views and different timings when you order an x-ray for different purposes coming to the views there are mainly three different types of views anterior posterior view posterior anterior view and lateral view based on the timing it can be divided into end inspiration is the ideal time for acquiring an image X-ray should be 180 degrees away from the chest. So first thing you need to do is confirm the details on the chest X-ray. The patient details like name, date of birth and unique identification number or the hospital number. Date and time when the film was taken. Any previous imaging will be useful for comparison. And as I told earlier, when you are following up a disease, how much it has progressed, the result can be known by comparing the present X-ray, the previous X-rays. Image annotation, there will be right and left marked. Carefully note right and left sides because that is what is going to give you an idea what to do next during the management. Image projection, either it is posterior anterior view or anterior posterior view or a lateral view. Next, you need to assess the quality of imaging. You can remember this by the mnemonic RIPE. R stands for rotation. Rotation you can calculate by measuring the distance between the thoracic spinal process and the clavicular heads. In a properly taken film, or if you say the image is of adequate quality, the distance on both the sides should be same. Otherwise, you call it as rotation the distance the side where the distance is increased there is a rotation towards that side the film should be taken in a proper inspiration diaphragm should be seen at the level of 8th or 10th posterior rib or 5th or 6th anterior rib for the film to be taken in an inspiration where you can actually examine the lung parenchyma to look for any abnormalities if the film is taken in either mid inspiration or full expiration, you will not be seeing the lung parenchyma fully and you will not be able to evaluate it completely. P stands for projection. Note if the film is an AP view or PO view. If there is no label, then assume it's a PO view because whenever, whenever you want to examine lung parenchyma, you are the PA film. Whenever you want to look at the bony art structure for any signs of trauma, you order an AP film. Exposure, the left hemidiaphragm should be visible up to the spine and the vertebrae should be visible behind the heart to call it as a adequately exposed film. If the vertebrae are not visible, it is either less exposed or overexposed film. PA versus AP views. So the first X-ray here is showing a PA view. The second X-ray is showing an AP view. In PA view, you know the position. The patient will be in standing position. The X-ray will be in front of the patient's chest and patient will be abutting the X-ray film. So what happens in a PA, PA film? The K clavicles will be at an angle because the patient has lifted his arms the clavicles will become at an angle and the scapula will be away from the lung borders scapula will be away from the lung borders that makes you to properly examine the lung fields completely without interposition of the scapula whereas in AP view it's usually taken in a patient who is not ambulatory or if you want to 
look at the skeletal architecture appropriately to order an AP film. Usually most of the X-ray films you order on the bedside in emergency department are AP, AP films. Here clavicles are either straight or at different angles, not like upward slanting and scapular border you can see within the lung fields. Here your main aim is to evaluate the bony architecture. So bones are given importance and they will be visible better than the lung parenchyma. And in an AP film, you cannot comment on the heart size. So coming to the systematic approach to evaluation of a chest X-ray, our most time tested approach, the ABCDE approach, which you follow for primary survey will hold good for even systematically evaluating a chest X-ray. ABCD approach, A stands for airway, S, trachea, carina, bronchi and the hyla structures are the airway structures. Breathing, the structures which help in breathing, the lungs and the pleura can be visualized. Cardiac, the heart size and the borders. D for diaphragm, including assessment of the costophrenic and cardiophrenic angles and everything else like mediastinal contours, bones, soft tissues, tubes, walls, pacemakers and review other areas. So this is the ABCD approach. Let's get on to it. So first of all, you need to look at the airway, especially the trachea. Trachea is normally located centrally or deviating slightly to the right side. If the trachea appears significantly deviated you need to inspect for anything that could be pushing or pulling the trachea. If it is, if the trachea is being pushed like in a tension pneumothorax, tension pneumothorax, you will see the normal trachea is shifted to the opposite side, that is away from the lung with a pathology. If trachea is pulled, the pathology is on the same side lung like in pleural effusion or perhaps the trachea will pull to the same side. Make sure to inspect for any paratracheal mosses and lymphadenopathy. So coming to this X-ray film here, you can see, first of all, it's a epifilm or PA film. Capillary borders are visible, clavicles are not angled, almost straight. Scabular borders are within the lung parenchyma, so it's a AP film, most probably a supine film taken on bedside. What do you see? There is a slight rotation to the right side and then the spine is not straight. Trachea appears to be pulled to the, pushed to the left side. You can make out the lung parenchyma clearly on the right side. When it comes to the left side, you can see the collapsed lung border and then there is area of the lung which doesn't have any bronchovascular markings, anechoic region. So this is a case of tension pneumothorax pushing the trachea to the opposite side. Case of through and apparent tracheal deviation, through tracheal deviation, pushing of the trachea by large pleural effusion or tension pneumothorax, pulling of the trachea by consolidation with associated lower collapse, apparent tracheal deviation. This is where there is no actual tracheal deviation, but when you look in the x ray, it appears that the trachea has been deviated to one side. This most probably happens because of rotation of the patient. So mentioned above, inspect the clavicles to rule out the presence of any rotation. Next part in the airway is looking at the carina and the bronchi. An appropriately exposed chest X-ray film, this division should be clearly visible. NG tube should bisect the carina if it is correctly placed in the gastrointestinal tract, and any inhaled foreign bodies will become lodged at the right main bronchus because the right main bronchus is more straight in course 
and wider than the left nine branches. So this is the trachea here. You can see the spinous process behind the trachea. Trachea is central in position. Inspect the clavicular heads from the spinous process. They are almost equidistant. There is no rotation. The scapular borders are away from the lung parenchymal shadow. The clavicles are placed at an angle. So this is a this is a PA film, and you can see the marking L for the left side, which correlates with the cardiac apex. So now you need to see the trachea and the airway. This is the trachea above the spinous process, and then here it is bisecting into left right main branches and the left main branches. This bisection area is the carina. This is the right main branches entering the right lung. This is the left main branches entering the left lung. So next part in the airway is examination of the hilar structures. You know what is hilum? Hilum is the place where all the vessels and bronchi enter or exit the lung. Hilar consists of main pulmonary vasculature and the major bronchi. Left hilum is often positioned slightly higher than the right, but there is a wide degree of variability between individuals. The hyla are usually same size, so asymmetry should raise suspicion of any pathology, especially infection. Or lymph nodes, hilar lymph node enlargement. Hilar enlargement can be caused by a number of different pathologies, like bilateral symmetrical enlargement is typically associated with sarcoidosis because of lymphadenopathy. Unilateral or asymmetrical enlargement may be due to underlying infection so we completed a airway next is breathing breathing we look at the lungs inspect the lung zones ensuring that lung markings are present throughout compare each zone between lungs noting any asymmetry so the radiographic anatomy of the lung is divided into upper zone mid zone and the lower zone you need to compare each zone on both the sides looking for any abnormal densities. Some lung pathology causes symmetrical changes in the lung fields like pulmonary edema which can make it more difficult to recognize. So it's important to keep this in mind. Increased air space shadowing in a given area of the lung field may indicate a pathology like consolidation or malignant lesions. Complete absence of lung markings should raise suspicion of a pneumothorax so look at these x-rays and try to examine the upper zone middle zone and the lower zone the first x-ray there is a hyperdensity present on the right lower and mid zone and there are some air markings within the <coughs> both higher are symmetrically enlarged indicating there is might be hilar lymphadenopathy and there is a consolidation patch there is an air bronchogram these markings within the non homogeneous opacity are called air bronchogram it indicates presence of consolidation Second X-ray, you can see haziness throughout the lung fields, especially so in the lower zones, especially in the costophrenic, cardiophrenic angles are not well visualized. There are markings throughout. It's called fluffy infiltrate pattern, most commonly seen in acute respiratory distress syndrome. In the next x-ray, we are looking at the parenchyma for any abnormal hyperdensities or hypodensities or areas without lung markings, costophrenic and cardiophrenic angles. So on the right upper zone, there is a well-defined, rounded, homogeneous opacity. Well-defined, rounded, homogeneous opacity which indicates a malignant tumor. What do you see in this 
this x-ray? Yes, there are multiple kind like opacities spread throughout the lungs. Can anyone tell what is this indicate? Yes, it indicates cannonball metastasis. There is a distant metastasis into the lungs, which is called cannonball metastasis. It appears like multiple discoid opacities, homogeneous opacities, multiple discoid homogeneous opacities, which indicates cannonball metastasis. So, in this film, you see the increased bronchovascular markings the spreading into the lower zones. In the lower zones, there are non homogeneous infiltrates, which indicates viral pneumonitis, especially in COVID 19. You can see in this type of picture. Yes, in this x ray, you see. What do you see? There are streaks of opacity spread throughout the both the lung fields. Streak like opacities spreading from almost center to the almost to the periphery of the lungs. This is pulmonary fibrosis. This is usually seen in post COVID syndrome, pulmonary fibrosis or ILD. Next thing, you need to look at the pleura in breathing. You need to look at the pleura. Usually, pleura is not visible. The pleura is visible. There is thickening of the pleura like this. See, this is the pleura which is thickened. Usually happens in mesothelioma. And then, here you can see There is a collapsed lung border and this whole area you are not able to see any lung markings and the trachea is pushed to the opposite side, the mediastinum along with the heart is pushed to the opposite side. There is asymmetry between both the lung fields. So this part where there is no lung markings and clearly visible lung border indicates presence of pneumothorax. When it is pushing the mediastinum and opposite lung, it's called tension pneumothorax, which is a medical emergency. You need to immediately decompress the lungs and plan for a chest tube insertion. Yes, what do you see here? On the right side of the lung, there is a homogeneous opacity which is spreading and a shaved pattern upwards and the cardiophrenic and cardiophrenic angles are blunted. This is a case of pleural effusion where you see the leaf edge curve. Yes, what do you see here? Yes, there is no lung markings on the right side lung, whole lung and the lung is completely collapsed with border just at the hilum. There is a straight line below which there is a homogeneous whitened fields and above that there is homogeneous black fields without any lung marking. So this is hydronemothorax when there is air and lung fluid present within the lung cavities it will be straight line whereas if there is pleural effusion only fluid is there because of the capillary action. It spreads upwards like this and you can see a LEs S curve. If you are able to see an LEs S curve, that is a pure pleural effusion. If you are able to see a straight line aligned with a collapsed lung and an area of homogeneous opacity without any lung markings, you say chemopneumothorax. Cardiac, as is the heart size, the heart should occupy no more than 50% of the thoracic width. Cardiomegaly is said to be present if the heart occupies more than 50% of the thoracic width and a 
posterior anterior chest x-ray assess the heart borders inspect the borders of the heart which should be well defined in healthy individuals right atrium makes up most of the right heart border left ventricular makes up the most of the left heart border heart borders may become difficult to distinguish from lung fields as a result of pathology which increases the opacity of the overlying lung tissue reduce the definition of the right heart border is typically associated with right middle lobe consolidation reduce the definition of the left heart border is typically associated with lingular consolidation so in this film in the right side we are not able to make out the heart border as well you can make out on the left side and then it appears like a shadow in shadow so this indicates middle lobe effusion or paracardiac effusion next in a b c d e is diaphragm you have to look at the right hemi diaphragm is most case higher than the left healthy individuals due to presence of the liver which is a solid organ stomach underlies the left hemi diaphragm and is best identified with the gastric air bubble here this is the gastric air bubble if free gas is present there is was you can make out mostly under the diaphragm air accumulates under the diaphragm causing it to lift and become visibly separate from the liver so here you can see a clear line which indicates the diaphragmatic line here and another clear line with a black shadow clear line here this is the liver border so this is the air under diaphragm present in pneumoperitoneum pneumoperitoneum is occurs in hollow vessel separation next coming to the costophrenic angles the costophrenic angles are formed from the dome of each diaphragm and the lateral chest wall they should be clearly visible on a normal chest x ray as well defined acute angles Costophrenic blunting can indicate presence of fluid or consolidation in the area. Costophrenic blunting can also develop secondary to lung hyperinflation as a result of diaphragmatic flattening of some secant loss of the acute angle. Sometimes you can see a deep costophrenic angle is called either beak sign or the deep sulcus sign. Which indicates presence of pneumothorax on the side where the deep sulcus sign is noted. Compared to the opposite side, here the costophrenic angle is ending here, whereas here it's projecting down, so it's called deep sulcus sign. Next, look at the costophrenic angles here. The costophrenic angles and cardiophrenic angles both are not clearly visible. There are multiple infiltrates on the lower borders of the lungs. This can happen with either paraneumonic effusions, synneumonic effusions, or viral pneumonitis. So then you need to look at everything else. The mediastinum, aortic knuckle is located at the left lateral edge of the aorta as it arches back over the main left bancus. This is the aortic knuckle. Reduce the definition of the aortic knuckle contours may occur in the context of aneurysm. Aortopulmonary window is the space located between the arch of the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. So here the pulmonary artery goes like this, aortic arch comes like this. Between that is the aortic pulmonary window. This space can be lost as a result of mediastinal lymphadenopathy. If the space is lost, then there is mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Bones and soft tissues, bones, you need to inspect bones one by one, visible skeletal structures looking for abnormalities like fractures or lytic lesions. Soft tissues, inspect the soft tissues for obvious abnormalities like large hematomas or presence of subcutaneous foreign bodies. Tubes, walls and pacemakers, tubes especially the nasogastric tube, you will confirm by chest x-ray. You can see the lead marking at the tip of the Rails tube within the stomach under the gastric air bubble that means that the nasogastric tube is placed correctly lines various tubes and cables will be visible in radio opaque lines on chest x-ray like central line ecg cables you can make out 
if you want to properly examine the x ray you need to disconnect the ecg cables and also the ecg leads before going for a chest x ray artificial heart walls if they are mechanical walls they will appear as ring shaped structures in the chest x ray within the region of the heart pacemakers pacemaker is typically appears as a radio opaque disc or oval in the infraclavicular region connected to pacemaker wires which are positioned within the heart so this is the rail tube rail tube is passing down in the esophagus as i told earlier it's bisecting the carina and coming down you can see the lead pellets at the tip of the rail tube what do you see in this x ray there is a radio opaque line which is ending in between two clavicular heads and there is a bevel and two markings this is a endotracheal tube in place chest x ray can also be used to confirm the placement of endotracheal tube thank you for any doubts you can inbox me also don't forget to like share and subscribe to get the videos whenever i post directly onto your inbox thank you all